So thanks, thanks for coming and thanks for staying with us uh, to this point. Uh, the paper that I'm going to give uh, is, about law, is about culture and law in, in corporate governance. And uh, Zohar was kind enough uh, to allow me to give this paper, which is highly theoretical, very abstract. Um, and, and now that I got Zohar, Zohar's permission, um, I have some misgivings, um, especially in light of the discussion that we had um, this morning and even now uh, from, from Sharon and, and even Rob. So I would like to put this general abstract paper in more concrete or more practical context by making a few preliminary comments. Uh, the idea, the thrust of the paper is uh, culture is important uh, for corporate governance and for corporate law, uh, but at the same time, we mustn't forget that we should take the law seriously. So, and, and that's the message, as, as trivial as, as it may sound. Um, and to me, a source of strength of, of Delaware law is uh, the fact that Delaware judges take the law very seriously, uh, that their legal expertise uh, is, is, in my mind, even more important than any other expertise that they may have and do have uh, with regards to finance or accounting or whatever. Um, so it's, it's about the law and it's about the doctrine. And be, because the entire conference today and even you know, earlier uh, meetings that we had here, uh, we, we took the law seriously and we look at Delaware as a source of, you know, Good legal, good stuff. Good legal materials uh, that are, you know, nearly unquestionably uh, good candidates for importation and transplantation. However, uh, this should be done with care, and and that's the message of the comments and 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 the paper, uh, because perhaps not all Delaware law uh, is good for transplantation, and perhaps, and I personally believe. Uh, certain parts, not large ones, but certain parts of Delaware law uh, are just not good enough. Uh, scholars say so, uh, and I believe that ju Delaware judges uh, know, know that. And a lot of the talk, or the way to look, one way to look at MFW, I had to say, uh, one way to look at MFW is, um, to, t interp is to interpret it as, as part of a trend of Delaware very carefully, very slowly, but in, in a determined way, backing up uh, of entire fairness and towards a version or a legal approach that is actually more common uh, or is part of, of Israeli law because of our English law um, origins. So, uh, in order not to be entirely abstract, even, if, even in my kind of practical comments, uh, I'll give just perhaps one or two examples. Uh, business judgment rule. Uh, in the early, uh, in the morning, early morning comments, uh, we heard that the position of, of this doctrine or the standing of this doctrine is not entirely clear. Um, I believe it is part of positive uh, Israeli law. Uh, Sean uh, wrote a very influential article uh, in this direction that encouraged uh, courts in, during the recent years uh, to, to adopt it, and I think that that's part of Israeli law. However, uh, even when we look at the business judgment rule based or, or in light of Delaware decisions, uh, we shouldn't, in fact, we don't, uh, uh, we mustn't even, uh, adopt the gross negligence part of it. The Israeli law is different. It's based on regular negligence. There's no point uh, in adopting that part of Aronson uh, to, to Israeli law. The, the issue becomes even more complex when we come to entire fairness, and we heard uh, Sean speak about just just now. Um, so, of the two limbs, the procedural limbs, the, the halich uh, limb, um, has been adopted again in light of H and H 2008. Uh, that's Hamdani and Hanes 2008 in the in the Machteshim case, and there are certain mentioning uh, citations of uh, the other limb, the substantive limb of, of fair price, that's bad law, okay? That, that's wrong law in Israel. Uh, that's, that's not the law in Israel. And as, as far as I understand and uh, the way I read Delaware cases, uh, they pretty much realize uh, that they should back up, uh, back away, in fact, uh, from, from that part of the law. So this is something that we shouldn't uh, transplant, should, shouldn't import. And Sharon 
mentioned uh, the idea of standards of review. That's a very complex doctrine uh, that is related in, in a way to entire fairness and its substantive uh, limb. There's no reason for us to adopt it. That, that's that's a unuseful, I wouldn't say useless in, in Delaware, in a Delaware context, but in Israel, it probably doesn't, doesn't worth, uh, it's, it's not worth uh, the cost uh, that it entails. And with this, let's go into the, the actual paper. Th this is part, what I'm going to present today, is part of a project that surveys the role of culture, w w the, the literature, uh, uh, what, what we know about the role of culture uh, and, and law in corporate governance and try, tries to glean some inter integrative insights uh, in this regard. The challenge in, in dealing with culture in any legal analysis, or especially in, in a law and economics uh, analytical framework, is that culture is so elusive, that it's so nebulous, that people tend to just dismiss it uh, because they either think it's not important or it could be abused, the notion could be abused, uh, and we should stick to rigorous, cold regressions uh, when, when we deal with uh, you know, corporate governance issues and agency. And, and the idea is that you could do that, just, just that, uh, when we uh, deal with culture, analyze cultural uh, factors in corporate governance. <clears throat> in the context of this, this conference, legal transplantation looms large. So think, think big uh, first. Think about China. Okay, and if China is not big enough for you, uh, just throw in uh, also uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong and Korea and Japan and uh, what did I leave out? Well, that's about it. That, that's good enough, okay? Now, this, that region of the world is, everybody would tell you, they are very much influenced by what is called Confucian values. Uh, that's a different set of normative uh, uh, principles and beliefs, uh, uh, empirical, you would say, beliefs about the world, uh, Guanxi, uh, this, this thing here, stands for a very elaborate concept of interpersonal relationships that in a culture that, that leave, lives up or adopts or subscribes to this kind of in social institution, the question who is independent for you know, independent director purposes may become entirely different. So when Hong Kong, Korea, Japan, even China uh, recently, when, when these countries adopt the institution of an independent director, does it make sense? Would it have the same effect as it may or may not have in the US or in Israel or in other, uh, any other country? Uh, after thinking big, think small. How do these issues of, kind of fundamental social institutional uh, aspects, how do they apply, how, how may they apply to a country uh, like Israel. Um, the take home line, um, we today know much more than we used to know, uh, say 10 or 15 years ago, about the role of culture uh, in, in corporate governance. Um, and what we know now uh, is that it does, have, it does have a role. A good way to think about culture in, you know, in an economic-oriented uh, audience is uh, the analytical framework of what's called new institutional economics. Uh, Douglas North is usually credited for kind of being a pioneer in, in this field. And North defines institutions as the rules of the game in a society, the humanly devised constraints. These are things that are out there and constrain or guide people's behavior even though they're not written uh, anywhere, anywhere or maybe they're written but there's a reason why they are there. And Williamson, another kind of Nobel red figure uh, in, in new institutional economics, makes this distinction between informal institutions, namely culture that comprise norms, values, beliefs, uh, they're not written anywhere, and formal institutions, which is basically the law, the combination of what is like the fundamental informal institutions and the formal legal institutions together give, give rise, the combination gives rise to what we know as governance. This is like the relationship of power, the, if, what this eventually uh, boils down to resource allocation. A key insight, the thing that drives the entire argument and the entire thinking in this field is the notion of systemic consistency, uh, a term that uh, Jean Hollande coined, or you can think about conceptual compatibility, 
The idea is, is, is simple, but it's very powerful. Institutions generally form a system in the sense that each institution in the system is complemented uh, by others achieving a certain systemic consistency, meaning that every component, at least roughly, should fit. And when we think about legal trans transplantation, the inquiry would be, does it fit with the system, both the formal and the informal, namely the legal and the cultural? Okay, the challenge when we talk about cultural analysis is how to compare cultures. If if we want to inquire whether a certain component, say, independent directors, or entire fairness, or full disclosure, or whatever, uh, fits within a different uh, corporate governance, or would fit the, within a corporate governance system that you know, contemplates imp transplanting it, how do you compare uh, the two systems? And the news are that you could do that. You can actually do that, and, and quite rigorously. Here, the key concept is uh, cultural dimensions. The idea, the, the postulate, if you, if, if you will, uh, in social sciences is that societies basically have the same issues all around the world. Now, a social group that's large enough essentially has to tackle a limited set of fundamental, very important questions, and the answers, the views, the, the, the positions that every society takes on these small number, these handful of fundamental questions, this could be used to represent or to create a cultural profile. Now, this is a, the essence uh, of cultural positions or informal institutions. Uh, so you c once you identify this fundamental issues, you can have dimensions on, on which cultures may vary uh, in, 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 in answering or in addressing these issues. There are today several cultural theories, several dimensional uh, theories, the two prominent ones uh, are by a Dutch scholar called Geert of Stede, it dates from 1980, uh, still very influential, very powerful, uh, even today, comes with a data set, so these theories come with data, uh, or <clears throat> should, should, co should come with data. I won't go into the details for the interest of time, but just take a look at the titles and you'll have some intuition about what are the issues that are addressed by these dimensions, and what is like the range of positions that could be, could be held in, in every culture uh, on, on these issues. These are topics or the fundamental topics that every society needs to address is the, you know, the place of an individual, the person within the social fabric. That's usually the first and most important dimension. Uh, di issues of power, division of power, uh, legitimacy of power differences. This is the second uh, dimension and some additional uh, issues. Um, a more recent, more advanced, now the leading uh, theory was, uh, was developed by Shalom Schwartz from Hebrew University, a co-author of mine uh, in a number of papers. Uh, again, three dimensions, take a look at the, at the title, just have an intuitive hunch about what they address. The role of the person, differences in power and resource allocation, and issues of dynamism and change and uncertainty. Now, here's the news, and this is, this is news from the last just several, last few years. I, I, I said that you know, economists in particular used to dismiss culture as unimportant because it was so, it is. It is very nebulous. Uh, and, and the fear is, perfect. The fear is that, uh, you know, it, it might be abused. Recent research uh, shows that culture is causal in the sense that fundamental cultural positions or stances may affect current uh, 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 policy outcomes, uh, so to speak. Let me skip the slide about culture and law. The bottom line is they are strongly related and are related in a causal way. That is, culture affects the way the legal system looks like and the content of laws. And let me just, in two minutes, uh, mention uh, two issues to, or just a couple examples uh, of corporate governance. Earnings management. I didn't plan that, but, uh, but that, that fits perfectly with uh, what Rob had to show us. Earning man earnings management essentially reflects a lot of discretion or some discretion in the hands of management within the boundaries of the law, so that's legal discretion, to fiddle with the numbers, okay? To, to uh, fiddle with the communication, the amount of information, and the form of information that is given with regard to earnings uh, to, to uh, 
you know, investors and all other market participants. And once there's discretion, there is power and there's role for cultural regulation. And there's substantive research, substantial research showing that earnings management relates to uh, cultural dimension, dimensions. Meaning that the way managers communicate with the market about com you know, firm earnings is culturally influenced or is influenced by, by their cultural background. Uh, there is work on another issue that, that you know, reflects discretion, which is uh, dividend payouts. Again, within the, boundary of the boundaries of the law, managers could you know, play around with how much they pay out, which affects stakeholder and shareholder relations. Uh, the literature is unsettled, but there's a lot of work on, on this, uh, meaning on the role of culture. There's evidence on causal and, and, re and relations between culture and executive compensation, again, uh, relating to Rob's um, presentation. And let me skip to the conclusion. Um, what next? More work. That's, that's always a good kind of concluding paragraph in, a, in an academic paper. More research is warranted. Uh, in order to have a better picture, there's, there's need for better theories. Uh, and, and once we have a better hunch, we're not there yet, but once we have a better hunch about how culture and law interact with in, in shaping corporate governance, we may be able to address issues of transplantation, and I'll be happy to take questions about Israel, for, for instance. Thank you. Questions? Okay.